81 judges cast 92 votes? That's the question on social media after last night's final of the hugely popular Sing China Show. Adds up to 92, but there were 81 judges. Some are asking if there was a mistake or if the contest was rigged. Whatever the case, Hartona says he doesn't see it as a loss. He's the first Singaporean to have reached the final in five editions of this show, and he spoke to our producer, Yo Kai Ting, about what he's taken away from the whole experience. Uh, I couldn't be happier, you know. To, to just to be part of the finals was a huge, huge honor. And to have been picked in the final two, that was... Uh, to be quite honest, unthinkable for me. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with my performance. Uh, really just did the best I could last night. Hatono first wowed the crowd at Beijing's National Stadium with a remixed version of a rap song, Nan Chaps, performed with his mentor, Taiwanese pop superstar, Jay Cho. <laughs> then, he consistently hit the high notes, singing Cho's The Longest Movie. Out of six contenders, that took him through to a final showdown against China's Jiang Dunhao. Patrono <laughs> delivered a heartfelt medley of Mavis He's Moonlight in the City and Anita Moy's Woman Flower. But he did miss a few notes and ended up losing out to Jiang, who garnered 57% of audience votes and a slight edge in votes from a professional judging panel. Hatono tells us he might never even have gotten this far without Jay Cho's mentorship. He was a exemplary leader, an exemplary musician. He does his homework, he does his own research on his time off to make sure he's aware of every student's um, strong and weak points. And I think more so than anything, I learned that a work ethic will take you far. Very, very far. Patono had entered the final with the highest qualifying score, but for the singer known as Xiang Yang on the show, it certainly wasn't all a breeze. If this interview were in Chinese, I would not have been able to be as articulate as I am, I think I'm being right now. And that's kind of been the biggest struggle over here, uh, that I've kind of been like half a person, like half of me gets lost in translation. He said other contestants understood that Mandarin isn't his first language and helped him out a lot. So these last few months in China have really inspired me to you know, really uh, kick it into second gear of that language and not just take a language skill for granted, I guess. Uh, so yes, kids, stay in school, uh, don't take Chinese for granted, do your ting xie, do your zuo wen, and make sure you get it right because you never know when you're going to need it in the future. The 25-year-old's first claim to fame was when he won the local Teenage Icon Talent Contest back in 2005. A year later, he released his debut album. He's also ventured into acting on stage and on TV. Now, he says he's grown a lot as a musician. I guess people here have started pricking their ears up for future music by me. But I cannot wait to get back home. I cannot wait to be back in the Singapore music scene and hopefully tackle Greater Asia and try a whole bunch of new things. And he has this message for his fans. Thank you very much to, to Singapore. Really, your support means so much. It makes me feel a lot less lonely here and it makes this journey feel like something a lot bigger than myself. So thank you for the support, thank you for the love, I appreciate every ounce of it.